Uh oh. Sky and Mystery find themselves in pretty hot water when they come up against Reap and Sow, minions of the Congregation of the Dead, who have the power to separate souls from bodies. And they want to make sure that Sky's soul stays exactly where it shouldn't be. Uh, we're going to talk about it here in our review of Grim Fairy Tales Volume 2, number 81 from Zenoscope Entertainment. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Grim Fairy Tales, Volume 2, number 81 from Zenoscope. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated. And make sure you stay to the end for the final thoughts and the score. So let's talk about the credits. Grim Fairy Tales, Volume 2, number 81 is written by Dave Franchini. Or is it Franchini? I'm not sure, but we'll go with Franchini. Art by Babasu Cortes. Colors by Jorge Cortez, letters by Taylor Esposito, and the cover art for cover A is done by Guillermo Fajardo. So let's talk about what happened in the previous issue. Uh, we're just sort of taking a break from all the Lovecraft stuff that's going on and, and all the different things that are happening in the different realms with Sky's mother for a new adventure, sort of a cool down adventure, if you will, where Mystery comes to town and she's hunting down these. Uh, magical uh, individuals who are essentially stealing the souls out of human bodies and replacing uh, dark spirits who are slave minion type spirits inside those same bodies. So essentially they're creating a army of entranced slaves, if you will, where the souls are now being separated and placed somewhere else. Through a, a series of undercover missions, one that eventually leads to a haunted house in the, I believe in the Gettysburg area. They enter the house with some tour guides who are part-time ghost hunters. And they eventually encounter Reap and So, who are these two uh, heavies, if you will, or hench women who, have, who go out into the world and they are responsible for luring humans into the congregation of the dead and stealing their souls and, and using the bodies as host slaves, if you will. Through a series of shenanigans that happen inside this uh, old house that might be haunted, uh, they enter a room. Reap and So are waiting for them, and they get the get whammied, and supposedly Mystery might be either knocked out or dead. And Sky is now trapped and entranced and in the grip of Reap, uh, of Reap and So. So that's what happened in the last issue. So what what happened in this issue? So the fight kind of picks up, but with a brief flashback, sort of where Mystery explains that she's going to be packing these quote-unquote spirit bombs, which were essentially uh, crystals wrapped in sage, which has a lot of that voodoo, hoodoo, uh, mystical cleansing type of capabilities. Go back to the present. Uh, Sky is now in the grip of Reap and Sow. She happens to pull out one of the spirit bombs that, uh, that Mystery was carrying, and she sets it off with her guardian of the Nexus power, and it blows the room apart um, and sends all the, the characters scattering. During that t particular time, Sky knocks out at least So. Reap gets away. She takes Sky takes uh, So's uh, crystal that she was using to open up a portal that separates the physical world from the spirit world. They find she finds Mystery's uh, soul, which had been taken out by Reap and So, puts the body and the soul back together. They go off with So now their prisoner, with the intention of doing some kind of interrogation, hopefully something that's non-lethal. Meanwhile, Reap goes back to the Congregation of the Dead, which is this huge sort of secret organization of people that are wearing these. De De La Muerta type uh, face paint um, costumes and she says I need help to take down Sky because she's too powerful on her own and she also has So so back to Reap uh, back to Mystery Sky and So uh, the, the all of a sudden Reap shows up with their boss a woman by the name of Ayansa and they have this huge swell of dark uh, spirits that come in and just trash the place, trash their car, and get so back. So now the pair are reunited, and uh, Mystery is knocked out, and Sky is now kidnapped, separated from her body, and they bring her soul and her body back to the headquarters of the Congregation of the Dead, which is under a Masons, Freemasons temple somewhere in, uh, I think it's Detroit. When all that happens, we find out that Sky is given a choice. Either join us, 
or and uh, submit our t undergo our tests to find out if you're worthy to be part of the Congregation of the Dead. And to do it, you have to fight one of our uh, big warrior generals, and whoever wins gets to have your body back. The end. That's where we leave off. Big cliffhanger. Two souls enter, one soul leaves. And that's that's how we end the issue. So what did we think about Grim Fairy Tales Volume 2, number 81 from Zenoscope Entertainment? Um, lots of interesting kind of mystical spirit action. If you're into the kind of comics that uh, mystery is usually the star of, uh, this fits right in. So Sky is along for the ride and the two of them are working together pretty much on par or, e or taking up equal parts of action. But this is really sort of a, almost a mystery, mystery with an E at the end type of story uh, because that's this is her deal, right? Dealing with uh, bad guys who get involved with the spirit world, dealing with supernatural systems and groups and organizations and threats and all kinds of things that, that pierce the veil between the living and the dead. That's very much Mystery's wheelhouse. So Sky is along and she's participating and she's very much taking the lead in a lot of respects, but this is but this is more of a mystery type of, of story. And we get plenty of supernatural action, twists and turns. Uh, the dialogue is generally good. The plot developments are good and the cliffhanger is strong. So yeah, I'm sure Sky doesn't want somebody else taking over her body because that would, that would suck. Nobody wants that. <laughs> so just to put it in simple terms, it's pretty straightforward. What do we like about the issue? Well, the, the twists and turns are a little bit twists and turns, more in the line of, and then this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens. We don't know what the Congregation of the Dead wants. We don't know what are the consequences if they win or lose, other than they're evil. So there's some, the, the villain is there, and they seem very powerful, and you want a villain or an organization, a villainous organization that's more powerful than the heroes because it gives them some, a challenge to live up to and overcome. That's a good thing. At the same time, we don't know any of the motivations. We don't we don't know understand the stakes other than Sky and Mystery not dying. But that's pretty much every uh, issue. So it's a little unclear about what, what it is they're trying to accomplish with this particular story arc. W what are they after? Are they building, is the Congregation of Dead building an army? And of course, that's probably a bad thing, but why are they building an army? If they've persisted for so long and have been so powerful for so long, what, what, what are, what's different now than before? And have they been building up to something? Where are we going with this? And so this is the, the, the second, yeah, this is the second issue in this arc. And it's still quite not clear what, what's the intent. What's the goal? Are we trying to establish something? Or what are we trying to prevent? Or what are we trying to uh, bring to pass? And that sort of lack of goal and the, and the lack of direction you know, makes the story a little bit fuzzy. And so we wish there was just more clarity about where the story's going. Let's talk about the art. So Babasu Cortez is the main artist on the Grim Fairy Tales series. Um, in incrementally getting better. I mean, we've had some issues with Babasu in the past, primarily because his inks are very rough, almost sloppy, especially when it comes to fine details like hair and um, and some of the in, in the uh, in, uh, details in the background, especially with characters who are small because they are in the background and on the foreground. Um, the, 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 the sloppiness has improved. And that's a good thing. It's not great. It's OK. So the art is generally OK. Plus, the co colors from Jorge Cortez uh, are, are good. The palette color selection is good. But the blending and the feathering and the contouring for highlighting, uh, for highlights and for darkness and shading and shadow is not the best. It's very digital and you can see the separation lines and it doesn't quite make contours look glossy, but it's close to that. And so the range of colors selected are good, but the application of the colors is not great. So overall, it's good art. It's just not fantastic art. So, final thoughts. What do we think about Grim Fairy Tales Volume 2, number 81 from Xenoscope? Uh, good action, lots of mystical supernatural action and plot developments. The villain seems big and overwhelming to the hero, which is what you want. But at the same time, we don't know what the villain wants, so we don't have stakes. We don't have, we don't understand the consequences of what's happening other than the villains are bad, which is pretty much par for the course. And the art is just okay. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. So therefore, we're going to give Grim Fairy Tales Volume 2, number 81 from Zenoscope Entertainment a 7.5 out of 10. We hope you liked this review. 
Thank you for joining us. If you want more reviews just like this one, stay tuned through the outro.